Hello. Hello. My name is Dennis Dillon. It's a privilege to be here tonight at the community TV station doing the live Wellfleet summer concert series. I'm going to start out with a Spanish inspired tune. Tonight I'm going to be doing mostly original music, a lot of instrumental stuff. And I'm a luthier, which is a string instrument builder and also a guitar historian. And as you can see behind me, we have some interesting guitars here. And we're going to, I have a little presentation I do called American Guitar Design and Evolution, a Musical and Historical Journey. So I'm going to present these various instruments and tell you a little bit about them and how the guitar evolved and changed through the years. Now the guitar as we know it is only about 200 years old. It arrived in about the 1840s from uh, Spain. And it, similar to this instrument here, although this is a modern version of the classical guitar, and it has nylon strings. They used to be gut strings. It evolved from the French lute, in, which is a Renaissance period. And the modern guitar as we know it is basically designed, all the guitars you see come out of this original classical design. This one being modern, it has a cutaway in here, and it has a, a little bit narrower neck and an arched fretboard, which isn't traditional. Anyways, I'm going to start here with this song called Spanish Serenade, just kind of an in, inspired by the Spanish guitar. gusto amigos, muchas gracias. Here's a little morning tune I wrote with a little bit of Beatlesque inspiration. Goes.
a lot of us guitar players, as we've gotten older, we've come back to the pure classical guitar because it's a lot softer, the strings are softer and easier on the hands. And uh, tonight, all the instruments are being played purely acoustically. There's no wires, there's no pickups. So all the guitars that you're going to hear tonight are just the pure acoustic sound picked up by the microphones. Here's kind of a new anthem that I wrote. Starts out. <laughs> to uh, use the harmonica doing basically the vocal line. I kind of like instrumental music and not to uh, complicate things with lyrics. So the harmonica has a tendency to play what the melodic or vocal line would be. So that's the classical guitar. This next guitar is a guitar I built back in Taos 40 years ago. As the guitar evolved, it eventually it became a steel string instrument. And the first guitars that evolved from the classical looked much like a classical guitar, only they had steel strings and they were built heavier to take the steel strings. And then eventually the bodies got bigger and there became more frets free of the neck and this is a copy, or, or it's modeled after a Gibson SJ200, they're called, the big jumbo cowboy guitars. And this has a spruce top, ebony fingerboard and bridge, rosewood back and sides, and a mahogany neck. And I built it back there in Taos in 1980. I did seven winters in Taos with nothing but wood heat, a cold spigot in the kitchen, and an outhouse out back. I remember
remember when my father came to visit and he used that outhouse for the first time. He came up and said, that you can have. So here's an original little blues number called Dogs Barking Blues, if there is such a thing as an original blues number. But this is them real blues, not them white boy blues. And uh, you know when them dogs are barking, keeping you awake at night and stuff? It's really the owners are the problems, not the dogs. So here we go, a little dogs barking blues for you. Here's a little toe tapper for you. Thing I wrote called Dill's Rag goes.
man embodies a bit of Travis picking, it's called. And it was put on the map by a fellow named Merle Travis in the late 40s. There's only two kinds of picking that are named after people. There's Carter picking and Travis picking. Some of you might have seen the Ken Burns country music uh, documentary. And the Carter family in the mid-20s did some of the first hillbilly recordings. And Mother Maybelle Carter, who obviously was a female, she invented this style, and it was really the start of uh, country style picking. It was kind of the first time mainstream America heard that kind of stuff. And their signature song was called Wildwood Flower. Now, I'm talking about the Carter picking, not the picking that I just did, but with Carter picking, basically you pick your thumb picks the melody notes, and then your middle finger kind of strokes down on the stroke. So when I came up in the 60s during the folk threat, in those days there weren't a lot of resources around. So there was a lot of word of mouth and father to son and uncle to nephew would just show you how to play these things. So a lot of us, this was one of the first songs we learned was the Carter family's Wildwood Flower, and it's an A-A-B-A -A -A form, so it goes, go, it goes like this. Repeat. Now here's the B part. And that A repeats. part A, you've learned three quarters of the song, and then you can just learn part B, and you've learned a whole song. And within it, there's things called hammer-ons, like this, and pull-offs, the opposite of that. So you inadvertently learn kind of this basic accompaniment, basic country accompaniment. And it was also the first tune that you could learn with a flat pick, for those that learned with a pick, that you would just do it... where a lot of us guitar players, before they had a lot of resources, that was one of the first songs you might learn. That's called Carter picking, but the real Carter picking is done with the, with the fingers, combining that thumb and the middle finger. You didn't know you were going to get a guitar lesson here tonight, too, did you? Now, we're also going to tell you about the Travis picking. And first, I'm going to do a, a medley of traditional American songs in the key of C. The first one is kind of a companion piece to the song I was just playing. It's called Freight Train, and it was written by a woman named Elizabeth Cotton, who was one of the, she was a domestic for the Seeger family, the Pete Seeger. I was one of Pete Seeger's seeds myself. And uh, she wrote this song, Freight Train, and that was the kind of the first song we'd learned for, for finger picking. Now, she played left-handed, so she actually played the bass with her finger and the melody with her thumb. But the style is based on the 20s barrel roll piano style where you have an independent bass in your left hand and an independent melody in your right hand. So in this case, the thumb is like the bass or left hand and the fingers are the melody. So you might recognize this song and I'm gonna do a medley of several songs. It's gonna include some Mississippi John Hurt in there and uh, I'll sing a little bit of the song so you can identify them. So this first one, Freight Train, goes like this.
my Creole belle. So that's a whole series of Americana finger picking for you with some uh, Mississippi John Hurt thrown in there. He was another folk he discovered back during the folk threat. Well, Jimi Hendrix came along and took care of that, didn't he? Well, that's how a lot of us got started out, interested in traditional American music and folk music. And then, of course, we got all into the electric stuff. Now. I want you folks at home there to quickly run over there, get your guitars out from under the bed and out of the closet, because we're going to have another lesson here, and I'm going to show you how this stuff is done. Now, when I came up, I asked the older guy, how did he, how did he do that, that, that there Travis picking? And, uh, you know, he was the older guy. He was like 17. So you get your guitars tuned up to, and you get an E chord here. And what you do, like again, I was explaining that this style that, as you may have noticed, the guitar actually sings the song. 
and the melody, it's a nice full sounding sound that you can really entertain yourself when you're playing alone with the guitar if you work on this and get it down. And again, it was based on a piano style with your left hand bass line being independent from your right hand and you get syncopation. Well, what's syncopation? Well, syncopation basically is music that swings. It's not like white people's music that's like a march, boom, 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 one, two, three, four. But there's an accent on the second and the fourth, so it's one, two, three, four. So you make your E chord and you just start, you get your thumb parallel with the strings and you go. Now see, the second one gets a little bit of a bump. And it's all about getting that going. Then you pray for a sign. You hope that you just stumble bumble into something, like you might just go. And then you do that for several days. Then you might add to that. And then you, a few more days go by, you try another thing. several more days till everybody's left the house and nobody's talking to you. Not your girlfriend, not your wife, not nobody, no how. But you just keep it going. And the main thing is to keep that bass going no matter what else. And then after a while, it starts turning into something. For instance...
right, so that involved some uh, traditional bluegrass stuff, little Doc Watson for you, and some John Fahey, he was one of the obscure folk guitarists from the uh, 60s, and then actually Leo Kotke went into overdrive there at the end, and it took the Fahey stuff and went bananas with it. So here's my current popular hit, the Perfect TV theme song. I'm gonna check my tuning a little bit as I torque down those strings a bit. I wanna make sure we're... The thing about the guitar is the strings do stretch. It does have to be tuned occasionally. I mean, not occasionally, frequently. Some people uh, don't realize you gotta put strings on them pretty regularly. And the strings get all stretched out and they don't stay in tune. They get all corroded. Yeah, see, it's definitely slipped out. Should have retuned it sooner. One of the running jokes is change strings once a year whether they need them or not. If you get that. It's really like once a month would be better. Some people change them every gig or so. So, this is a song I wrote about, it's called Come a Little Bit Closer and Leave Me Alone. A little more modern piece. Girlfriend, I don't need you no more. Won't you come a little bit closer and leave me alone? If your phone don't ring, it don't mean a thing. That's only me. I won't do that dance. I won't take that chance. No, not me.
So this is all coming at you live, not Memorex. The big jumbo cowboy guitar. Hand built in Taos with nothing but a pen knife and a chainsaw. Back then we were trying to build a new world, what can I say? Didn't quite work out that way though, did it? Okay. Now, when jazz developed back around the turn of the 19th century in the late 1800s and the early part of the 20th century, it evolved out of 15 and 20 piece marching horn bands. So there were lots of loud horns and there was often bass, drums, and piano. So the subtle sound of the acoustic guitar really couldn't be heard in those situations. And uh, it was just too quiet of an instrument. And that's where the banjo took over for some of the rhythmic chores. But the quality of tone of the banjo left something to be desired and it didn't have much sustain. And so different inventors and musicians in the Los Angeles area were experimenting with different materials and designs for the guitar and they were trying to mechanically generate a louder sound out of the instrument. Now of course this is prior to the electric guitar. So finally in 1926 a fellow by the name of John Dopiera of Eastern European descent invented what became known as the resophonic guitars. And this is exactly what the first instrument looked like in 1926. It's, this is a national steel-bodied guitar. It's a national steel-bodied tricone resophonic guitar style one. Can you say that? I didn't think so. It really embodies the nice deco period of art with the lattice work here. And it has some radical materials in it. This is a cover plate, but this T-shape here covers a T-shape cast aluminum bridge. And at each of the points of the bridge underneath this cover plate are these round resonator stamped aluminum cones. Aluminum at the time was a fairly new alloy. This body, I think, is a nickel-plated German silver. And this one has a square neck. Now, they did succeed in, in creating an instrument that had quite a bit louder sound, but what they really did inadvertently was they invented an instrument that sounded really good for glissando, as it's known in the Spanish where you slide or slur from one note to the next. Can you say that, glissando? Let me hear you say that. Glissando, that's very good. So the instruments themselves actually helped create a lot of the sub-genres of slide guitar as we know today. And one of the things I do is distinguish the difference, distinguish the distinction, so to say, of these different resophonic guitars. So this is a very unique one being the tricone resonator and of course this is a pre-war one that somehow survived the metal drives during the war and uh, perhaps it was riding around in the trunk of a taxi driver, who knows. But uh, they are being made again today and uh, you know both in America and overseas but except no substitutes, this is the genuine article. This is a 1929 National steel bodied resophonic guitar. And we're going to have to wear these, this OSHA requirements protective gear. And uh, I'm going to get down here and play a little traditional bluesy kind of stuff for you. And uh, oh, I guess I lost my harmonica. I'm still going to need that. So, uh, let me give you an idea how this thing sounds. Now, this thing does have a pickup on it, but we're not using the pickup. Again, all the instruments tonight, this is just a live show with nothing plugged in, no uh, smoke and mirrors, all live.
Fred McDowell song put on the map pretty much by the Rolling Stones Sticky Fingers album. Now I'm going to crank one of these strings up here and retune it. I did go out of tune there, got a little out of control there. But Beating on it. So what I'm going to do is put it into a, this is in an open uh, E right now, so you tune the strings to an open chord. So this sound you're getting would be just as though I was taking a standard tuned guitar and made this E chord. It's the same sound, but I've got the strings cranked up, and I'm going to now tune one string up to a sixth note and give it a Hawaiian sound. I'm going to take this string and I'm going to play a little Hawaiian number I wrote. And uh, this, uh, excuse me, this, uh, particular instrument was preferred by the Hawaiian players and they actually had whole Hawaiian there was a there was a big demand for Hawaiian music after World War One actually and they had whole bands that had you know 15 or 20 of these steel bodied instruments and they also had uh, mandolin steel body mandolins and four string tenor guitars and it, it created this incredible surge of creative music by the Hawaiians who really you can get some of those recordings still from the 20s that are that are pretty amazing but this is just my own my uh, hom homage 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 to that so we're going to go down to Waikiki a little thing I wrote Hawaiian lullaby it's called let's see how's it go <laughs>
original steel bodied tricone. Now the instrument itself evolved quite a bit and as things happen there was some disagreements in the company that was under the national steel moniker and so the inventor John Dupira went on to create another instrument called the Dobro and this is also a resophonic guitar <coughs> excuse me resophonic guitar it's a wooden bodied resophonic guitar it has a different type of resonator and these are the instruments that you're going to hear in almost all the Dobro <coughs> the Dobro recordings excuse me I must have a drink of water <clears throat> and uh, it has a much rounder, uh, more uh, warm sound to it. So let's see here. We're going to. This one's tuned to an open G chord instead of the E. three for you to start. Oh, uh, okay, let's see. Uh. puts fun in funeral and this is a uh, one of the songs you often hear at a funeral this is actually written by a cat that was a, a slave ship captain and then he supposedly had a big religious shift and he wrote this song that I hope you recognize the strains of it's some church music for you I need my protective gear here <laughs>
gotten quite a bit of attention lately. Now here's a little sleepy John Estes tune. <laughs> Texas, y'all, one of the hottest places around. Well, just about getting to wrap it up here. I got just a couple more songs for you. And this is a beautiful instrument from the 30s. It's called an arch top or plectrum guitar. And you can see how the violin influenced the design of the guitar. The top is actually carved out of a thick piece of wood, hand carved like a violin, so it's carved this way. All the curves are carved into it, and it's gouged out from underneath. And the back is the same way. It's, it's a maple back. Daniel Boone's a gunstock maple there. And these are carved and assembled similarly to the violin. And these are called F-holes. And this shows how the uh, violin influenced the guitar design. And these came around in the 30s, and they were used in the big bands and prior to the electric guitar. And some of the earlier electric guitars just put an electric pickup on these, and, you know, before the actual solid body electric came around, mostly after World War II. So here's some more original stuff for you, a couple of songs, and we'll be wrapping it up here.
thank you so much i am dennis dylan it's been a pleasure